If you're like most people, you've probably likely at some point thought about what it's like to keep a fox as a pet. Are foxes like dogs? Where do you buy a pet fox? What kind of fox makes the best pet? Unlike dogs, there aren't so-called breeds of foxes, but rather different species that have evolved in different parts of the world with different adaptations, personalities, and behaviors. There are not that many types of foxes that people keep as pets. Therefore, we will discuss those which are currently kept in a pet trade as well as those that used to be. It's always important to consider that foxes are not dogs. Despite being close relatives, as they are in a Canada family, foxes are generally not so great with their litter box habits and should never really be taken outside on a leash because these animals, if they get loose, are nearly impossible to catch. Furthermore, fox owners unfortunately face numerous prohibitions that make traveling with them difficult or impossible and make finding proper veterinary care harder. And even when pet foxes are legal, the laws can change seemingly at random and without justification. In most cases, a fox is not a pet for the casual pet owner. With that being said, some species may be more suitable for certain owners. The first fox species is extremely popular, the ubiquitous red fox, which also may be known as the domesticated fox. No, a so-called domesticated fox is not a separate species from the red fox, as say a cocker spaniel is from a modern wolf. In fact, there are two ways to get a domesticated fox. The first involves buying one from a breeder in the United States, which of course is relatively inexpensive. The word domestication does not only refer to animals bred to be pets, and these foxes are only considered to be domesticated because they descend from and were selectively bred in the fur trade. This is why these beautiful animals will often come with different coat types, including marble, silver, champagne, and platinum. Again, they are not different breeds. These foxes will, for the most part, behave just like any other red fox. But what about the so-called Russian domesticated foxes? You know, the ones from the famous experiment where foxes were domesticated and apparently ended up acting like dogs? First of all, the only way to get one of these foxes is to import it from Russia. The facility that sells them will spay or neuter any of their animals that are destined for the pet trade. Buying and importing this kind of fox will cost thousands and be very difficult. But is it worth it? The very small number of people who've experienced these animals suggests their behavior is a little more desired, but overall, a domesticated fox is still a fox. They will not behave like the typical pet dog. So what is a red fox like to own anyway? One thing is unanimous with red fox owners. They have very smelly urine. You'll want to keep a red fox outdoors at least partially, or have a specially designed indoor space for it. Red foxes are active, and as the largest pet fox you can get, this outdoor space will also have the added benefit of giving them outdoor enrichment to get adequate exercise. Many owners report that red foxes can be destructive indoors. A pet red fox is probably not the best choice for someone's first venture into exotic pet ownership, despite their cheaper price tag. Arctic foxes are frequently available, although perhaps to a lesser extent than red foxes, and they tend to cost more. This is a smaller canid, reaching about 12 inches at the shoulder. These foxes, just like reds, are said to have very smelly urine and stool. While there have been arctic foxes that have bonded with similar sized pets when raised with them from a young age, these animals are said to be more skittish and nervous than red foxes. They can also have a temperamental streak, which can lead to aggression. Another special need of the arctic fox is its sensitivity to temperature, which is understandable given that these animals hail from arctic and tundra regions. They do not do well in very warm climates, which will pose a challenge to keepers in warmer regions because it is better to house them outdoors, both for the benefit of the fox as well as the sanity of the owner. The arctic fox is beautiful and iconic. However, just like red foxes, some have poor bathroom habits destructive tendencies, and in most situations, they are poorly suited to live exclusively indoors. 
Therefore, accommodations need to be made to keep them cool outdoors, or they must have a tolerant owner to live with indoors, who is okay with their odor and their indoor behavior. You may find that owners of Arctic foxes describe different experiences with them, including their smell, litter box use, and temperament, so one fox may not be like the other. The Arctic fox will make a good pet for a limited number of owners who can adapt along with its special needs. Out of all the species on our list, the fennec fox may easily be considered to make the better pet based on size, adaptability, odor, accessibility, and legality. Fennecs are compact foxes that are smaller than the average house cat and are easily accommodated indoors because they have little odor, though their bathroom habits, as reported by many owners, vary. Many fennec fox owners will say that they can never be litter box trained 100%, but at least their droppings in urine are not as strong smelling as red and arctic foxes. Fennecs are small enough that they can be housed in an enclosure as simple as a double wide critter nation cage or something similar. Still, like all foxes, they are balls of energy and they are also quite noisy. They can also be destructive as well as fennecs in the wild are burrowers and they have innate digging behavior. Speaking of wild fennec foxes, even they are extremely gregarious and playful. Fennecs make for incredibly entertaining pets, but their high octane energy may be overwhelming for some. Again, no fox is an ideal pet for most people. All of them are considered to be challenging for the casual pet owner, but compared to other foxes, fennec foxes are pretty forgiving. Their price tag, however, isn't, as they are one of the more popular foxes and therefore also expensive. After seeing the fennec fox, you might be doing a double take. Though they kind of look like the fennec fox and a red fox had a baby, the pale or pallid fox is a separate species from both. Like the fennec, the pale fox comes from hot desert areas in Africa, and they are also burrow digging, gregarious, and nocturnal animals in the wild. Formerly extremely rare in captivity, they are starting to appear more often in the pet trade as of current and their care is described as being very similar to the fennec fox. Continuing with our desert-dwelling foxes, we have the Ruppel's fox, named after the German naturalist Eduard Ruppel. This is yet another small species that is also a recent introduction to the pet trade and currently rare to own. You can tell that the species is also similar in appearance to the fennec fox and it originates from North Africa, the Middle East, and Southwestern Asia. Due to its rarity, there is currently not much known about what it's like to care for them. They weigh about three to eight pounds, so they are larger than fennec foxes. Being from semi-desert regions, they may have lower odor, which would be good for indoor living. The Corsac fox is native to the desert regions of Central Asia, Mongolia, and parts of China. They are nomadic hunters, consuming any mammals that are small enough for them to catch, favoring rodent prey. They will also consume insects and carrion. They were very popular in the fur trade and were actually kept as pets in the 17th century, but today they are rarely kept as pets and may only be currently owned in the UK. This is the bat-eared fox, a dark-colored canid with large ears that is slightly larger than the fennec fox, weighing 6 to 12 pounds. Another African fox, these omnivores are found in arid grasslands and savannas in the wild. Something that makes the species unique is that it is primarily insectivorous. Again, they are uncommon as pets, although there are currently a small number of breeders within the country. Most people who keep them tend to be those who own them to do educational work, as of current. Like the arctic and red fox, the gray fox is both a species native to the United States and is somewhat common in the exotic pet trade. They also may be considered to be the best pets out of the three, as owners report that they are more affectionate and have less odor. Still, like red foxes, they may dig a carpeting. They may not litter box train fully, including having urine marking behavior, and have high activity levels, making them suitable indoors only for the tolerant owner. 
Gray foxes are more omnivorous than other foxes and they will benefit from an outdoor enclosure. The swift fox is native to the United States and originally from Canada as well, although it has been reintroduced to Canada, where it disappeared from in the 1930s due to habitat fragmentation. The largest populations are in Colorado, Kansas, New Mexico, and Wyoming. They are the smallest wild canid in the United States. Owners describe that the swift fox makes a wonderful pet due to a friendly personality and very low odor. Although like other foxes, they may dig at carpeting. Swift foxes have been reported to even litter box train, although they might mark items they steal with their droppings. Despite the advantages that swift foxes have over other pet foxes, they are unfortunately very rare to find. Our last fox species is the kit fox, which some actually consider to be the same species as swift foxes. But most scientists believe the evidence points to these foxes as being a separate species. Knowing this, it's probable that the care and personality of the kit fox is nearly identical to the swift fox, also native to the southwestern United States as well as Mexico. They, like swift foxes, are like the fennec fox of the Americas. They thrive in arid climates and they are also currently rare in the exotic pet trade, although some people do own them. These 10 species all have one thing in common. They've lost out in popularity to pet dogs for a reason. Despite being members of the canid family, foxes have been compared more to cats due to their independence and agility. They are very different animals from their dog cousins. When approaching fox ownership, new owners should expect the worst outcome so that there are no unfortunate surprises when taking on their care.